Hey everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about the greener reagents reacting with epoxides. So let's say we have this epoxide and I'm trying to do the reaction here with phenyl magnesium bromide. This reaction is going to be a fairly typical epoxide opening with a strong nucleophile and in cases like that the attack is going to be happening from the less substituted side of our epoxide. So if let's say I number my epoxide as carbon's number one and carbon number two like so, the carbon number one here is going to be the less substituted one, so we are going to be opening our epoxide from this direction. And mechanistically speaking, my phenyl magnesium bromide is going to attack this carbon, breaking the carbon oxygen bond, giving me the following intermediate, where I have just formed a new carbon-carbon bond between these atoms over here, so I'm going to say that this is my new bond. Bond. And of course, like with any Grignard reaction, we are going to follow it up with the uh, aqueous workup, so I'm going to bring my acid over here, and I'm going to show that this acid is going to protonate our oxygen, so oxygen is going to come in, grab this proton over here, and I'm going to make our final product here, which is of course going to be an alcohol. The secondary alcohol in this particular case. Simple enough, right? Well, let's look at one another example. So in this example, again, I have an epoxide on the left side, and I have my vinyl magnesium bromide, so that is going to be my Grignard reagent. Here, like in the previous case, I will look at my epoxide and let's number my carbons as 1 and 2, like so, and like in the previous case, I am going to be targeting carbon number 1 as the less substituted carbon in this particular molecule. So, mechanistically speaking, my vinyl magnesium bromide is going to attack my carbon of the epoxide, opening the epoxide like so, breaking our carbon-oxygen bond, and we are going to get the following intermediate as the result of our nucleophilic attack. And naturally, we are going to bring our uh, acid here to do the acidic workup, so oxygen is going to grab the proton from the uh, acid over here, and we are going to get our final product, where the new bond that I have just formed is right over here, so I'm going to say that that is my new bond right there. Now, one another thing to keep in mind about the epoxide opening in basic conditions like that with our Grignard reagent is the stereochemistry. The thing is, here we are always going to be seeing a backside attack. This is essentially, in a nutshell, is an SN2 reaction. So if there is any stereochemistry in this case, we are going to be inverting that stereochemistry. So like, for instance, in this example, if I add some stereochemistry chemistry to my starting material, showing the dash and the wedge, then the opening is going to invert my stereochemistry, giving me the final product looking like this, where the new group that I have introduced in my molecule is going to be looking in the opposite direction from where the oxygen is. Now, I didn't bring up this reaction here just to remind you how we open epoxides with nucleophiles. Since the Grignard reagent is one of the main methods of the carbon-carbon bond formation within the scope of a regular sophomore organic chemistry course, this reaction can be useful in synthesis as well. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say we have this target molecule over here, and we're hellbound to make this molecule via the reaction of the epoxide with the Grignard reagent. Why? Well, who knows? Maybe we have certain limitations to our starting materials or whatever else might be the case. The point is that we are trying to make this molecule via the epoxide. Now, in order to do the retro synthetic analysis here, the carbon with the oxygen, I'm going to number that as my carbon number two, and the nearby carbon is going to be my carbon number one. The new carbon-carbon bond that I am making here via my Grignard reaction is always going to be the bond between carbon number one and whatever else is connected to that carbon. Which means that in this case, the left part of the molecule would be coming from the epoxide, and my carbon-oxygen bond 
used to be right over here. So that is kind of a shape for where my epoxide used to be. And the right side of this molecule, that used to be my Grignard reagent. So that means that my predecessors here are going to be these two molecules. And here, my carbon number one is right over here. My carbon number two is right over there. And when we are doing this reaction, my butyl magnesium bromide is going going to be attacking my carbon number one, opening my epoxide like so, eventually after the acidic workup, giving me my final molecule, my target molecule. And in cases like that, one of the most common mistakes that I see a lot of students make is either losing your carbons or writing additional ones. So always make sure you count your carbons. So I have already labeled my carbons one and two for the epoxide part. I will also number one, two, three and four, four carbons for my green yard part, and I will show those carbons one, two, three and four here as well. So this way I know that I have not lost any carbons, nor have I added any extras. Because even if the idea of your reaction is correct, if you have the incorrect number of carbons in your chain, well, you're going to lose points on the test and we definitely don't wanna see that. Now, not every single example is going to be as straightforward as this one. Let's for instance, look at this target molecule over here. There are a few different ways how we could potentially synthesize that using the epoxide. So the carbon with the oxygen, that is going to be my carbon number two. Then I have a carbon number one on the right and I have carbon number one on the left side as well, which means that I can potentially have multiple different options here. I could be making a bond over here or I could be potentially making a bond between carbon number one on the left side of the molecule or maybe I was thinking about this bond over here. So those are three possibilities possibilities. So I'm going to show the option one for the orange bond, option two for my green bond, and option three for my purple bond. And I'm purposefully keeping bad bond angles for my option three, just to make sure that my molecule looks as much as the uh, target molecule as possible, so it is a little bit easier to visualize what's going on there. Now, analyzing these three examples, these three options here, I see that these three options are not equally as good. In the first case, where I'm going to do this attack on carbon number one, opening my epoxide, I am not going to have any problems because my atom number one here is in fact less substituted, so the regioselectivity here should be relatively good. However, in my option two, if I try to do the same trick, well, the problem here is going to be that now my atom number one, that is a secondary atom. And atom number two is a secondary atom as well. And while the overall group on the right side of the molecule is larger, the regioselectivity is no longer going to be as good here. So this is not a good option for us because we do want to maximize our yield. The same problem we are going to see in option number three, where if I try to uh, attack my atom number one over here, I have exactly the same issue. Atom number one is a secondary and atom number two is a secondary carbon as well, which means that I am not going to get a good regioselectivity in option number three either, which means that I am going to choose option number one and I'm going to discard options number two and three as non-viable for this particular synthesis. So while the Grignard reaction can be a very powerful synthetic tool when used with epoxide, it is not a magic pill and you always have to analyze your molecules very carefully because not every combination is going to work. So the next time you are planning your multi-step synthesis using the Grignard reaction, think if maybe the reaction of the Grignard reagent with the epoxide oxide might be a good way to go. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, boop the like button and subscribe for more. Check out this video next and I will see you next time.